The power of AI can seem pretty scary when it's depicted in films or online. But AI is here to stay and it's becoming a part of our business and I would say potentially a central part of all small businesses. In this video, I want to share a few tools with you that I think are absolutely essential for small business owners to be using in the AI field right now and how you can get started with them easily today. My name is Pete Moriarty and I run a service helping small business owners get their tech right. And I love sharing tech tools with as many business owners as possible. That's why I started this channel. Now, it's easy to see that there is a huge revolution happening in knowledge work and especially for consultants right now, which makes us a little bit scared, but also pretty excited for our particular industry. It means that we can help more small business owners do things in radically different ways. And the shift that was started with outsourcing and the pandemic working from home has just been accelerated by leveraged tools that allow us to get much more done with less. In this video, I've got five tools to help your small business thrive. And I'd love to know, did I miss anything? Or is there something you're using right now that you'd love to share with other business owners? Pop that down in the comments. To start us off, we've got to mention GPT. And unless you've been living under a rock, I'm going to expect that you've already got your hands dirty with ChatGPT OpenAI's GPT offering. Now, the latest version GPT 4.0 is pretty much open to everyone and accessible. So if you've been worried about the cost of licenses, rolling out GPT to your team to get their hands on the really powerful stuff, well, thanks to many different competitors and the evolution naturally happening in these tools, well, there is a very accessible version available to everyone right now. Now, GPT 4.0 can be downloaded to your computer as well for a desktop experience. And I like being able to open that up with a keyboard shortcut and start typing my query straight away. It keeps all the different queries that I've put in there saved and I can access them on my mobile as well. And basically it's giving me a experience unlike I've ever had in my pocket and on the go when I'm on my computer as well. Now, aside from the basics of using GPT to help us create video scripts and help us to do the work that we would otherwise give to a staff member internally, we've been using it in some pretty clever ways. I set up an automated Zapier bot that goes into my Gmail, reads and summarizes my emails and actually sends them to a Google chat room. So I don't have to even open my emails to get an automated virtual assistant style summary of my emails in place every day. Now I also set up a automated newsroom inside a Google chat room as well, which looks based on a Google alert for information and news articles around the web related to our chosen area of business. Now for us, we're experts on Google Workspace. And so I wanna see all of the global articles, news releases and new updates that are published around Workspace. The news bot will read an article, summarize it and post it to our automated newsroom. Let me know where the publication is it's coming from so I know whether or not it's a legitimate article or just somebody's SEO and I can get a bit of a summary of what is said in the article. If I decide I wanna read the whole thing, I can click one button because I've got the link there. Now this summarization is happening automatically via a Zap using Zapier, but the real brains behind it is obviously ChatGPT from OpenAI. More recently, we've been experimenting with uploading all of the knowledge of our company, like our SOPs and our documents that explain how to do things inside the business that we would normally manually be entering into an intranet on Google Sites and having GPT give us back answers when we actually query what's going on in the business or how to complete a particular process. I'm going to share more about that in an upcoming video, so make sure you subscribe to check that out when it's released. Now I can't talk about language models without mentioning Google's own Gemini. Gemini has started the race a little bit behind to be honest and I've made other videos on my thoughts of Gemini right now. Every week it seems to be releasing more features and getting better and better and providing more value. I'm still paying for my license but I haven't rolled it out to my whole team yet. One of the best features I've seen released recently is the ability to tag and ask questions of my Google Drive, of my email and of other Google applications right from within Gemini. And that's starting to make it a bit more useful because when compared head to head to ChatGPT, it just doesn't cut the mustard as a language model that I wanna use every single day. Gemini, you are definitely catching up and I look forward to seeing where Google go with the product next. Number two, let's talk about DALI. And if you don't know, DALI is the image generation technology that sits under ChatGPT. 
Now, we tried generating images in Gemini when it first became available to the public, but I just wasn't that impressed. And Google got in a lot of trouble for some of the images that were being created from Gemini, and they've pretty much hamstrung that whole feature now. It's really hard to create images even for basic business slideshows within the Google ecosystem. So Gemini is no longer my recommendation for generating images. Now, Dali, on the other hand, which is built into ChatGPT from OpenAI, does an amazing job of generating images. And we've been using that for a lot of our basic graphics that we need to generate in-house. If our CEO, Scott, needs to create a post for LinkedIn, he's gonna generate an AI image right in the browser and he can choose to send that out himself. The kind of thing that he would normally come to a graphic designer or our creative marketing team to get done for him, he can just now do himself. On our production team, we're using image generators to come up with thumbnail ideas for our videos. As we scope out a new catchy title or idea for a concept for a video, we wanna have our team rapidly create prototypes and think about new ways that we can potentially express our ideas. Well, we use these tools to generate images and then we can workshop them with our team, use them for brainstorming. They might not be the final that we actually go with and post up on the channel because we're probably gonna have a professional designer actually create that, but these are a great prototyping tool when we're in the brainstorming phase of a new video idea. We've seen customers using Dali or other image generating tools to create images for products on their website where they may not have an actual photo or an image of what they need. We've seen customers using them for stock photography, for your presentations, where you've got an idea of a picture in mind, but you're not sure if just Googling something is gonna give you a copyright protected image or not. Now, it is a bit ironic that a lot of these images are being generated because of people's copyrighted work and that's a video for another day. But Dali is an excellent tool in your arsenal for small business owners. Tool number three, I wanna mention Notion. And to be honest, we don't use this on a day-to-day -day basis inside the business, but I know a lot of small business owners do use Notion to build an intranet or even a business documentation ecosystem. You can use it to manage tasks and projects and some business owners do. My personal recommendation and preference is to use Asana, but whatever floats your boat and works for you, I'm a fan of. Now, Notion, I think are one of the leaders in AI small business tools because as well as putting all of your information into Notion and creating a database of company knowledge, you can also use Notion's AI tools to recall that knowledge. And one of the things that I really love about it is you can set up custom fields, for example, that are AI driven. If you have data entered into a big list of information in a table, well, you can have an AI driven field, which is automatically going to create a summary or automatically going to modify some data or automatically create a calculation, all driven by AI. And I've got to say, Notion are at the forefront of this when it comes to task, project and productivity apps and I love seeing what they're doing with these tools. I do wanna make an honorable mention to Asana here who have started building AI intelligence options into their tool set. And I haven't been completely blown away with the options just yet, but they do now give me the option of auto-filling some of my custom fields to try and fill them out using AI's best guess of what the option may be based on its intelligence of the other data that I have inside the app. The other thing I do really like about Asana's AI features is you can have subtasks automatically created on a task. Now, that's really useful if you're setting up a project or you wanna delegate something to someone else and you don't wanna to have to think about the 10 things that need to be done on a particular task, well, you can give the heavy lifting to Asana and have them do that for you. The next tool I recommend for business owners, and this is one I'm using every single day, is Grammarly. Now, Grammarly was a pretty boring tool for many years. It's been around for a long time and has always been that option in the browser if you wanna get your writing done better. That's not a great sentence, is it? Exactly, it's for people like me who are not amazing at writing or grammar or spelling, and it's pretty much a catch-all for getting your words right when you wanna put them in somewhere on the internet on your computer. Now, the thing I do like about Grammarly is because it's integrated into my operating system, I've downloaded it and installed it on my machine. Once I've set up a paid plan, all I need to do to actually have fixes made is to hit the tab button. So I can type in my spaghetti typing or I can even dictate, which I also do pretty often, and then just hit the tab button and Grammarly is automatically going to fix my words. Now, Grammarly is AI driven. It's using the language models that are you know, popular and I'm sure they've got their own model as well. Um, but AI is effectively helping you to write more clearly and you can even use all of the standard features you would expect to change and modify the things you're saying. Do you wanna make it more social? Do you wanna make it shorter? Do you wanna make it more concise? Well, with one button, with a click, you can do that with Grammarly. I find myself not using those ones so much, but the AI-driven grammar fixes and capitalization and just making sentences a little bit more human and easy to read for people, because sometimes I dictate and I don't dictate very clearly, it 
means that is all just fixed with the click of a button. Thank you, Grammarly. Finally, I wanna share with you my favorite note-taking app for meetings right now. And I'm assuming most people in the world are still doing some kind of hybrid working, even if you're being forced to go back to an office. But in small business land, you know, we really believe in productivity and we believe in flexibility for the most part. And so most small business owners have, if not a flexible workplace, potentially a completely geographically distributed workplace. And especially if you're building international teams, well, you're probably gonna end up with lots of people everywhere. But the downside of that means that we're probably gonna spend a lot of time on meetings, whether it's Google Meet or Zoom or Teams or something else, you wanna have a way of capturing those notes. Now, Microsoft do have their Copilot notes, which are okay. I haven't seen them personally, but in all reports I've seen, they're okay. There are also automated notes that can be generated from Gemini, which is based on the automated transcription that comes with Google Meet. And I've got to say they're okay, but there is one product that truly stands out that I've tested recently, and that is Fathom Video. Now, Fathom not only takes notes and it's been tuned to get to the crux of what your action items are and what the key points are of a meeting, and it's been dialed in over a number of years. And so they've really done a fantastic job of the note taking and annotation. If with a paid plan, you can click a button and have notes that are automatically set up for different types of apps. If you wanna paste it somewhere in particular um, and have it formatted in a special way. I don't bother with that personally, but it might be useful for you. The thing I really love about Fathom and the thing that makes it beat any other note taking, including the native ones like Gemini, as good as Google's transcription is, is that Fathom allows you to have a link to your previous meeting which has timestamps against the notes. And with one button, you can click to go and watch that part of the meeting, which is wonderful. Why do we need notes? Why do we rely on notes? Well, we wanna go and look at what was said during that meeting. And in the instance that we decide, hey, you know what? I'd love to go and listen to that little 10 second or 30 second snippet when someone said that thing. Well, Fathom's got that sorted for you. You can click a link and go straight back to that point in time in the meeting and listen to what was actually said. Let me tell you, for someone who spends hours and hours and hours on online meetings, by choice, I have an amazing app that allows me to just go back in time anytime I need to and find what someone said on the meeting if I ever need to refer it. Big thumbs up Fathom and thanks very much for all the other tools who've been featured in this video. We're not paid to do this video by any of these, but we do receive some commissions for Google's tools because we are a Google partner. If you'd like to learn more about small business tech, click on the subscribe button, stick around on the channel. And if you'd like a small business technology consultation to check out your business or audit your Google Workspace account, click on the link down below and I'll see you there.